My name is Kavu Yaktaga Caroline. I am um, I am a mother of three, two handsome boys and uh, one beautiful queen. She calls herself Queen Chloe. Um, I'm married to Mr. Masareka Joseph. He's a banker, and um, I am a, a magistrate, grade one, in charge of this court, Luzira Court. I am a feeder board member. I sit on the board of uh, directors of FIDA Uganda, of course the leading organization, women organization that advances women's, ag women's uh, agenda. And um, I am a farmer at the same time. I am a teacher. I sometimes part time in some of the universities and institutions of higher learning, including the Lord Movement Center. I do so many things generally. I am a multitasker. Yes. When I wake up in the morning, of course I begin with my children, my family, to make sure that my family is okay, my children are okay, they are going to school, my husband is okay and is happy. Because a happy family uh, and a happy mind definitely has to produce good work. So from there, then I know. I, I, always, uh, I always look at what I'm going to do that day. I organize my day the previous day. So, and it's always uh, given allocated time. So um, I know that by this time I must be here, by this time I'm here, by this time I'm here. And uh, fortunately, for the, for the institutions where I do part-time, they are very organized institutions that uh, they give you a calendar year. Uh, they, I mean, they, they give you a, 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 year, a yearly program where you're able to fit in. And uh, whatever you do does not affect your, 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 your job, as, uh, for example, as a magistrate. And uh, so I, I make sure that I plan my work so well and I don't uh, compromise any of my duties anywhere. That's why I'm able to be here and I'm able to even serve the communities elsewhere. Yeah, because uh, I feel that as a woman, as an empowered woman who is uh, educated and exposed, um, some of, of, of our women need to tap in some of, <coughs> of our experiences and the expertise that we have, yeah, as in a way of giving back to society, yeah. Oh, incidentally, I have a very touchy story. I have a very motivating story that I've even thought of writing about in order to motivate and encourage more young girls. I grew up in a home where... Um, <coughs> Many were, were boys. I grew up mainly with boys, much as my dad had so many girls, but I didn't grow with many of the girls. So I, am, I grew up as a tom, tomboy, and I always felt I, I am equal to boys. Yeah. Much as I'm a girl, I, am also, I'm, I can compete favorably with boys. And all through my, my school life, I have, been, I have never felt like being second to a boy. No. I always wanted to compete. Yeah, so uh, fast forward, I, I, I grew up as a science, science uh, student because I was good at math, I was good at chemistry, I was good at physics, science uh, subjects basically. So I knew I would either be an engineer or I would, my parents wanted me to be a doctor but I loved to be a science teacher because my mother was a teacher by profession, my father was a teacher by profession. So when I grew up knowing that that's what I'm going to be and that is where I got focused. So um, when I reached in year six, that was at Katikamu Secondary School in Wobblenzi. Um, no, before, before senior six, I joined senior five and I was given PCB math. And I didn't love biology um, because I didn't no I didn't like chemistry because in my O level I I, I I didn't even like it I just did it because yes much as I passed but I, it wasn't my thing mainly I wanted I was so much in physics and mathematics and uh, I even grew up doing things like a boy uh, repairing radios, TVs, coming up with the solar panels. That's how, I, that's how I grew up. So all I knew in my life that I would either be an engineer or a science teacher. Now, I go to this school, that is uh, Light College Katikamu, 
that is because uh, I, uh, being an Adventist child, I wanted to go to an Adventist school. So when I went there, they wanted to give me PCB math, and uh, I didn't like it. I wanted uh, PEM, but uh, because they had what they, they said they were giving only those that had got uh, D1s and D2s in mathematics. So finally, I had to request my dad to change my school. I went to Katikam SDA, Woblins. But because my friends were there, actually it was bandwagon, my friends were there, I changed my, my combination from, uh, from PCB math, which had been given in Katikam and uh, uh, Light College, and went and did Heg D, that is Katikam Woblins now. But I did not inform my parents because I knew they were going to be mad at me, and I made sure that I worked hard but of course, throughout the term and the year, finally I broke the, the, the bad news to them. But I would call them bad news to them because for them they thought I would be a science child. And I told them this is what I'm doing, but I'm okay, I'm happy with, with what I'm doing, and I, I will make you proud. What I was looking at now, having moved from the science, uh, science uh, department to the, to the arts department, so now, my next move was to be a teacher. I always loved to be a teacher, yes. And uh, all through, I feel education, education, market education, uh, Chambogo education, everywhere it was just education. Yeah, so even diploma, I feel education. I didn't feel any other course. So when it came to, to time for going to school, I then, uh, I was going to market for education. But then over the, over the radio, I had, I had an announcement that uh, they, there's, no more, there's no more recruitment of arts, student, arts teachers in government. Mm -hmm. I said, what? what? What did I put myself into? So I'm not going to get a job because I'm going to study for only three years and I don't have where to work. There and then I changed my mind. I told myself I'm not meant to be a teacher. That is why this has come. Maybe I'm meant to be another thing. Then I looked, of course, thought about any other course. I said, no, but I can be a lawyer. I think I have the, the ability to be a, a lawyer. Yes, I had the brains. And also, I am, because I was this kind of girl who always went for the best and the highest, much as they used to say that law is for boys, I felt, no, it, it, is, it was time for me to go for that course and uh, prove it that even a woman can be a lawyer. I come from uh, Bundibujo district and uh, I am the first woman lawyer or female lawyer from that district. I think I could be the very first lawyer from that district, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I had nobody to look at other than myself. So I said, I either do it or I do it. When I went to Light College, their, their motto was, if others can, I will. Mm -hmm. And that has always encouraged me to do whatever I want to do. Because I, believe that if the bo I believed that if the boys could do it, I could also do it. So, it but this was, um, uh, 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 this was something that came in my mind after the semester had started. Because I was supposed to be in school by that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had not yet gone. So, fortunately, there was an announcement, okay. again, that uh, KIU had opened. And they had uh, started uh, uh, admitting, I mean, they had started law. Mm -hmm. When I found out from Mukono, Mukono was already closed. Nkumba was already Nkumba at that time, I think they hadn't started law. Mm -hmm. So it was only Mukono and Makere. So I couldn't go to Makere for law, neither could I go for Mukono for law because they had already closed. Yes. But there was an opportunity to go to Kampala International University. But now, I, I, was, I was between a hard rock and a, and a, a, hard, a, a hard place and a rock. Do I go to Makere and continue with education? Because now time has gone, I cannot reapply. Do I go to this new university and, and start my, what my, I start my career, what I feel I want. So I had a, a discussion with a, a cousin who was then um, a, a prosecutor. It was called Makasi Alfred. He motivated me and encouraged me. He told me, no, with you, Carol, I know you can make it. 
I was even surprised that you were going for education. I know you can, you can be a good lawyer. Mm -hmm. So he encouraged me more to go and do the law. So now, the announcement, the announcement I earlier talked about was that KIU was taking two students from each district, a girl and a boy, mm -hmm. basari. basari. Mm -hmm. So without paying any, any, anything other than, other than consolidated, they used to call it consolidated fund. Pocket allowance, yes. No, it was consolidated fund for, I think, ID, library, yeah. yeah. So, and it was just 170. My dad was not at home. He had moved, he had come to, to Kampala because he was then the district education officer. So he, I think he was holding up things in his office. Without, because that time I did not have a phone, without even informing him, I just made a decision. I said, no, I think I need to take up this opportunity. So I went to the, uh, to the then uh, uh, LC5 of the district. May he so rest in peace. He was called the late Bambalira Jackson. So he gave me a cheat and told me, if you're interested, if you want to, to go and study from this university, let me recommend you, and then you go. He recommended me, and I went. He told me, let's meet there tomorrow. Fortunately, I had also participated. I grew up as a very active young girl. I had participated in, this, in census. So I had been given my 60,000 salary. So that is the money I used as transport because daddy was not there to give me money. That time my mother was, was deceased. So I had to use this money to take, to bring me to Kampala and, and, and I reached uh, uh, KIU on time because we had agreed to meet there. So when I reached there, still, I was still in between there. Yes, I had decided to do law, but I, I was asking myself, really, is this the right decision I'm making? So as, I, as soon as I entered the, the, the admissions uh, office, I told myself, no, Carol, just decide. Whatever the outcome, you will pay the price, but go by what your heart tells you. So when I entered, I saw the LFC5, the late, there. He, he pointed at me. I think he had already discussed it with the admissions, head admissions, the director. Then he said, this is the girl. So when I entered, they asked me, do you want to do, to do, do law? I said, yes, yes. I said, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure I can make it. So that is how I started. Now, that's how my journey started. When, when I was in class, I would look at, you know, I, I'm, I'm this kind of person, when I'm in, this, in a class, I gauge, uh, am, I, am I up to standard? Will I manage to cope up with uh, these, these other students? We had people who had done law, dif uh, diploma in law, and they were submitting in class the constitution, article this of, of the constitution of the, and I'm like, okay, Carol, calm down. This they learned it, you also learn. So how many did I, they give in that class? Uh, we were quite many. We were quite many, and uh, from different countries, from Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda. Being of course that name international, it 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 uh, brought so many. Yeah, it attracted so many people from other countries. Now. We, I move on and then, wow, I realized my performance was good. I was scoring 3.7, 3.8, I said, okay. So I think I can, I think I can. My very first um, excitement was my first semester. I got 3.3, much as it was a lower class, I was so excited that I didn't have a retake because I, all we knew is that with university, as long as you don't have a retake, that's it. So 3.3, oh my God, we even jubilated, we were so happy. But as time went on, I learned that I needed to work harder and improve on, on, my, on my grades. Fast forward, um, my dad dies in third year, while well, I was in third year. But I think all this was God's plan. God telling me to change my, my course from law, from education to law and going to another university where I was being given a bursary, it was all God's plan because he knew, he knew what was coming ahead of me. So he dies when before I could complete my third my third year, I was not so much worried. So the only problem was now to look for the 170 per. It was per semester per year. I think it was per year. Not per year. So, yeah, it, it was by per year. Mm -hmm. So uh, being the, the the Carol who really wanted to achieve what she wanted, because all along my mom used to tell me that it is Carol. I have two two daughters, and I look up to you. I know you will, you, will, you will make it in life, and I know you will, you will be a very successful, successful young lady. And I always remembered that. So whenever I would meet friends of my mother or my father, who knew that now Carol was an, a total orphan, they would give me money like, let's say, 20,000. I, 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 got, I got a box 
these, uh, they're called the, the, these money banks. Huh? So I got that car box. I, I remember I bought it at 2000 And whenever someone would give me money, I would eat only 1000 or 2000 The 18000 I would drop it in the box. Why? Because I, it, I was planning now for the next, for the next uh, year so that I should pay, I should be able to pay that the, the consolidated fee and even and uh, and hostel fee and other small small things so that time my, my follower was uh, in senior four senior three and i also had a stepsister may, may her so rest in peace lydia i loved her so much she she was also doing she was in her senior four so we agreed that lydia you know what and titus you sit for me let me finish. When I'm done, I'll take care of you. So I got a, ma a photocopying machine at KIU. I got someone to give, to offer my sister a car job mm -hmm. to work on the photocopying machine. And she was being paid 3000 per day. Why were we doing that? So that we were looking now for money that will help, will feed us. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because I was looking for money for the, other, for the, for the consolidated fund and, 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 and accommodation. Then I knew now my sister would cater for our meals, and I brought them. I brought Titus and Lydia, we stayed together. So I explained to the landlord, I told him, I'm, I'm an orphan, but don't worry, I know by the, by the next semester, I'll have gotten the money. Mm. Of course, we were working hand in hand with, uh, with my brother, Masareka Moses, and that time he hadn't, he hadn't, uh, he hadn't gotten a job. Yeah, he had just graduated at the time our dad died, and that was in third year. So that's, life went on, fortunately. Like I said, God, God will never forsake his own. We moved on and managed to live. To be honest, I can't tell you that I, I can even remember how we got the money, how we survived. But somehow we survived. And I completed my fourth year. Now, after completing my fourth year, we, I didn't, fourth year was supposed to, to do a dissertation. But because I did not have money, I didn't have someone to, to sponsor my research and everything, I decided to opt for, for another subject. No, then you do a subject and, uh, and uh, you'd opt for a subject instead of research. Mm -hmm. So I opted for that so that I should complete at the same time with others. I shouldn't be left out. But, but look, I didn't know where I was going to get money for LDC. But I knew, my heart was telling me, Carol, you will do LDC. You don't know who is going to pay for you? Yes, I don't know. I don't know where the money will come from. Mom is no more, dad is no more. But I know some, maybe God will provide someone along the way. So I, we used to, to, to an application fee was 15000 for LDC. So I borrowed from a friend. I told him, you know, Patrick, he was, he was a Kenyan student. He was my friend, my group mate. One of the people who always encouraged me to study together with another gentleman called Olayo Steven. So this, this guy gives me 15000 I think he knew, I did, I, he, he knew, in his heart, he knew he was just giving it to me because he, he knew my life. He was very close to me, but I had told him, you know, Patrick, when I get the money, I will pay, but at least let me be. Let, let, me, let me be to the deadline and apply. So I applied. Like I said, God will never forsake his own. I was among the 100 government students to be, to, to study, to be sponsored at LDC. But the unfortunate bit was that the, the, the government students were only given 800,000 at the end of the course. So now the issue again was, before, before you reach fourth, fourth term, how am I going to manage? How, am I, how will I sail through the first term, second term, and third term? And yet I needed to pay. To be honest, I went to school. I went and studied. I started with, with, other, with other colleagues without knowing whether I was going to pay tuition or I would not pay. Because I didn't know who was going to pay for, him, for me. My brother had not got, gotten a, a job. My father was no more. Nobody was even ready to pay for me. So I was just there. But I said, let me move with them. God will find a way. And indeed, I remember, I, I like that uh, uh, joking about it. The only skirt and blouse I had was a red, a red suit given to me by, by a friend. And with the LDC, you have to be in, in, in sober colors. Black, very smart, navy blue, white, you know. I said, I will not miss the orientation. I will go with on my red suit. Let them chase me away. I went. I, was the, I remember one of the lecturers, I would not mention him. He even said, 
are you one of us? I said, yes, and the whole class laughed. I said, yes, sir, I am one of you. Then, well, I mean, the day, the day went. But of course, in my heart, I was like, now, what do I do? Today, I have managed to come with a red, a red skirt and blouse. How am I going to know? How am I going to, 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 to look like tomorrow and all through? So while I was there, my brother calls me and tells me, Carol, you know what? He was so excited. I have gotten a job with Stan Big Bank. I got so excited. I was so happy. And he said, I will pay your fees. Don't worry. So I was so happy. And he borrowed money. He borrowed money to give me to buy a, little, some, a, a few suits. Of course, as long as you had uh, so those yeah. sober colors, uh, yes. I bought about two suits and about three blouses. So I would wash every day, on a daily basis. I wash. Make sure that I also fit <laughs> among others. So um, I started. While there, before he could send me the first, uh, because before he could earn his first salary, because that time he was earning 500000 before he could send me the first installment of my fees, we received a communication from from uh, from Kampala International University, mm -hmm. uh, written by the proprietor Basaja Barama. Mm -hmm. That man, I respect, respect him so much. He has made me what I am. He actually doesn't know this story that uh, I am telling you because I wish I had the opportunity of meeting him again to tell him that this is what I feel about him. And. Uh, he, he, the, the, the letter was saying the following 10 students have been selected to be sponsored by the university at the Law Development Center. Carol was among them. Look, I have told you that all through I didn't know that I didn't know that I would even get someone to pay my fees. But I was still, I, I, I was hopeful and uh, I still believed in God that he would make a way for me because all through my childhood, I have been having uh, um, people sponsoring, just liking me. I don't know what kind of a daughter a girl I was then. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I would impress them. But I still got this opportunity and the gentleman paid my fees from first term to the last until I left. But remember, I've told you that I had now that other 800 as a government student. Mm, exactly. Yes. So I knew, now I'm happy. Now, also my brother had said, I will pay for you. But because my, uh, uh, he was sending me, he, my brother would send me 200 from his salary, 200, the 300, or so, so that he remains with some, I did not tell him about this opportunity that Basaja that gave me. Because I needed more money for photocopying, for accommodation. For I did not ask. I did not ask for anything from him. For him, he would just send, and I knew how to use the money rightly. So I would uh, use that money for that other, for those other needs: lunch, supper, and so on and so forth. I rented, I rented a, a place. I went. I actually, I actually co-shared a room with uh, a cousin, a cousin brother. Yeah. He had a room at Kakajo, Kakajo along that old Kampala, mm -hmm. old Kampala, uh, <laughs> exactly uh, around there. So he had a room there, but he was already working with Ministry of, of uh, Finance, and he was he was never there. So I went spoke to him. I told him, Dan, can you please help me? Uh, I, I I I be coming from your room as I go to school. He said it's fine. I asked him how much is it. He said no, it is eighty thousand per month. I'll pay for you the 40, you pay 40. So we're co-sharing, yeah, the, 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 the rent. So he was actually never there. He actually did it for me. Mm -hmm. I also thank him so much. He knows I'm always in touch with him. Yeah, so that is what happened. Now, fast forward again. When you finish. I am at the Lord Development Center. Like I said, my motto was, if others can, I will. So for me, it was either I pass or I pass. There was no failure in my mind. I had to work for it. So fortunately, God helps me. I passed. I was given my car 800,000. Of course, after, after the last exams, that's when they give you your car 800. I was given my car 800,000. And I told myself, God is the one who, who brought me from Bundibujo to Kampala. I am not going back to Bundibujo. I am meant to be here. I'm not meant to be in the village, no. I got the 800,000 went and paid that room where uh, where I was staying, the 800, the 80, I paid for 10 months. I, I told myself, in 10 months, at least I will have gotten something. So 
I paid for, uh, for 10 months. I was there. I mean, I was looking for jobs here and there, Wait volunteering. Paid for 10 months. That's the whole money. <laughs> All the money, gone. yes, 800 gone. But remember, my sister is still working at KIU, getting that 3,000 per, per day. What at KIU staying with you? Yes, staying with me, together with my other brother, Titus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, 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 we kept on like that. Then I got a cheyo somewhere. Uh, I wouldn't really want to talk about this, but... Uh, this is where I would, I would do some work for some LDC students. Mm. Uh, they, I would answer their questions. I would answer there are these questions which they give students this every week. That answers questions. <laughs> <laughs> there are these questions they would, they would they, they, then we used to call them problem, problem questions. These days at LDC they call them workshops. So I would answer for them those questions, take them through how to answer them, what are the, the answers and so on. So preparing them for the, for the next week. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that when they are in class, they are able to uh, to, to to answer and yes, to, to catch up so easily. Because with LDC, you you needed to be really sharp. Yeah, because uh, the, the the first of all, the program is action packed. What you learned in four in four years is now they are now teaching you how to practice it in one year. Yeah, so those those uh, those students would pay me a hundred thousand per week. So I knew, I remember I paid 800, I paid rent. Now I have 100,000 per week, that is 400,000 per month. I have my sister who is, uh, who is uh, earning 3,000 per day. And I think life now started changing, yeah? So at least now I would put on a fairly nice shoe of 10,000. I could put on a suit of like 30, you know, because I knew there I could, I could afford. So after that, uh, in around, uh, in around, I think October, because we finished LDC in September, September, I think, September, July, something like. I, I don't remember well, but shortly after my LDC, meanwhile I'm doing this other chayo, again KIU. Which is illegal. It wasn't illegal per se. It wasn't illegal because I would discuss for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I would discuss for them those very questions. Yeah, they would come to me because I think it wasn't legal because it is allowed to do, to do their research. In a way, they were researching. Yeah, so I would I would prepare, read the questions, understand them, get the answers, then discuss for them. Mm -hmm. Then they go and and do what, and and and, and also proceed as if they <laughs> yes. So I have this a hundred thousand. I have paid my rent. I have a sister with three thousand, and life went on. Then uh, along the way. After a few months, again I was called by the university. I was called at the university to go and tutor as a, a teaching assistant. No, 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 at care. Yes, because uh, he called back his ten students he had sponsored. So he called he, he called his best ten students because he, they chose the best ten students. He's the ones he, he he's he, they are the ones he had sponsored. So they've gone through. Now they, he wanted us to go back and 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 tutor yes. as teaching assistants, helping students how to answer questions, how to how to do research, how to do this and that. And that's how my life started. I went there. Then, uh, fortunately, uh, when when uh, when we come after we had completed our LDC, our results were out. I had passed. Then Bondiwujo advertises for registrar of titles. Yeah. When they advertise, like did I'm you telling you, hear that advert on radio? I did. I, I heard about the advert, and even I was called by by the by the some of the officers who, who worked there mm. because, like I've said, they I was knew. the only law student. I was the only lawyer then. You see, so and this was the register of titles. You had to be a lawyer. Yeah. So I mean, there was uh, there was there was another colleague of mine. I don't remember whether he applied, because we were, I remember we were two, we were two students from, because from, the yeah, well, no, no, we were, we were two, no, 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 this one was, uh, was uh, from Makerere, mm -hmm. yes, it was a gentleman, and then myself, I don't know why he didn't apply, I don't remember, but I applied, and I think I was the only one who had applied, as, as a child of, of the soil, mm -hmm. we competed with other people, yes, but, well, I finally got the job. 
I don't think I got the job because I'm a child of the soil. Well, it could have been an added advantage. Yes. But I think I, I performed well because I had even sta- I had already started teaching at, at KIU yes. and I was teaching land, land transactions. So the questions I was asked, it's as if it was a, it was a class. Because I remember after, after, after I had even been given a job, one of the commissioners met me and said, you really impressed us so much. As if you had come to teach us. So, of course, now I was, uh, I, I knew, mm-hmm. yeah. Because I had, uh, it, this was my passion, and uh, I loved dealing in, I mean, reading land transactions. So, up to now, by the way, mm-hmm. land transactions is my best subject. Even as, as we speak now, whenever I part-time at the Lord Development Center, I teach land mm-hmm. transactions. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, the I got the job. Mm-hmm. And, of course, when I got the job, like I promised my brother and sister, I, t- I took them back to school with the help of my brother Moses now. No, this is Titus and, Titus and Lydia. Lydia. Mm-hmm. I took them back to school. As we speak, Titus is now a graduate of a Bachelor of Me- Labor- Medical Lab mm-hmm. from Barara University. Uh, Lydia, at, at the time of her death, she had finished a diploma in law. Mm-hmm. She, had, she, she was already working actually with, with us, judiciary, as a clerk. So I was looking at pushing her father for a degree. Unfortunately, she left us mm-hmm. Yeah, at that tender age. So basically, that is my journey. You see, mm-hmm. that's my journey. And uh, when I was uh, a registrar of titles, I worked for three years. I felt I needed, I needed to serve the public more mm-hmm. than what I was doing at, mm-hmm. at Ministry of Lands. Mm-hmm. Because Ministry of Lands, other than registering titles, caveats, and yeah, that desk work, I felt I wasn't giving back to society as I ought to, to, so to when give. You, when you so the there was an advert that was run in the papers about for, for the for magistrates. They wanted about they wanted about twenty something or thirty five magistrates across the country. Yeah, across the country. And uh, my my husband, my my husband now, who was my fiance then, he called me and told me there's this opportunity here. So he, um, he made an application for me and uh, submitted it. This time around, you got someone to help you. Yes, this time I got someone to help me. <laughs> so I submitted it. And, uh, but also maybe something that I had forgotten. When, before our results came back, you know, LDC was not a place that you'd think you'd go, just walk in and, and, and things you know, go right. Mm. Yeah, I was still worried because I didn't want to disappoint this Pastor Jabalaba man, mm. the gentleman who had, who had uh, paid my feet. My fees, I needed to show him that, yes, what you did for me, I have achieved it. So I was now worried. Supposing I failed, what happens? Who is going to, to, to pay for me? Because I don't think he will, he might, he will give me a second Another chance. chance. <clears throat> but uh, at that time, I had my husband now as my boyfriend, and uh, he was working with, uh, with uh, Stan Big Bank. So he said, don't worry, because anything comes out not, not good, I will pay. Uh, he was very, very promising, and uh, I believed him. He was really good, so caring, and I thank God that he actually brought such kind of a person in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but all, like I said, for me, from the day I was born, I think God had already purposed planned you. my exactly had purposed my journey. Yes, because everything that comes into my life, it is it is on point, and it is uh, it is uh, it is for my own good. Yeah, and I'll always thank God for for that. So what back to the magistrates. Mm. I have I have we go for an interview. We go for an interview and I was among the last people to sit in this interview. Yeah. So fortunately while while I'm seated in my office, deep down in the village in Bundibujo, because then I was the register of titles, in charge of Bundibujo district, mm. though I would sit at at the ministry, ministry. yes. Okay. So this time I was I had now moved because you have to keep reporting to your to your DG station. I received a call from uh, was someone from from uh, uh, Judicial Service Commission as one of the people who have been successful. And uh, to be to be honest, we were we were about we were about three hundred three hundred applicants. applicants. No, we were over one thousand applicants. Only about, I'm, I'm told, I later got this information later, only about 300 Which were shortlisted. Said. And among the 35 that were chosen, Carol, I was among. So that I am always proud of myself. Like I said, I am a go-getter. 
Whatever I want, I go for it. Mm. And I always, I don't believe in, 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 in uh, this saying of, you know, jobs are for the known. Yes, yes, no, I am, I am a village girl who came from the mountain. Nobody knew me all through my story. Nobody knew me. But I went through because I always know that, yes, even if others are known, for me, the one who knows me is above the others. Above them. Yes, he's above them. And I know he has a place for me. By the time he makes me go for that interview, he has already reserved a place for me. And he did. I, I became a magistrate. Something that I am I, I, so happy about because this job helps me to interface with so many categories of people, so many needy people, so many women that are vulnerable, not only women, even the men, the children. And this is what I have I've always I've grown up wanting to do, yeah, to help, to care for the, for the needy and to help, to give a helping hand. And uh, to be honest, I am one of the happiest people on this world because I love what I do and I do it with a passion. Now, because I was given now that opportunity to, to serve the public, I decided to, to use my space to be able to empower other people, especially the women and the children. Land justice affects everyone. Land justice is about is about uh, property rights. It's about rights of of any individual, including women. And we all know, believe me or not, that our society has uh, uh, our history tells us that even in our different cultures, a woman is not looked at as a person who is supposed to own property. But uh, much as the law says that we are equal before the law and the person can own property, but still our culture does not respect, the cultures do not respect that. Mm. That is why when it comes to, to inheritance, they, also, they always look at the, the, men. the men, the boys, you see, and forget, forget the girl child. So, I, so in a way, women are also are affected in the, they're affected uh, because they don't, they don't inherit property from, even the little property a woman has, in terms of land, I have seen cases where a man says, no, this is my property, because of that other stereotype and belief that women do not own property. And you realize that some of these cases originate from that. Because this lady is trying to assert her right and, 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 and fight for, for, for her right to own that property. That's when now issues of, 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 of that then conflict comes in. That's, that's when you hear the woman assaulted me, uh, there was threatening violence, there was criminal trespass, there was uh, so many things for, that she made, that she forged documents, and this lady is, is brought before me. I'm not saying that I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't preserve or protect men's rights. I do, but of course, we have to understand and accept that women are at a more disadvantaged level than, than men. Yeah, so it is now, it is my, my duty as, it is, as a duty bearer, as a person who sits at the bench, for example, to ensure that all rights are protected. Both parties are at the same level. Equity, 